In the decision and control uh, theme, um, we're really focused on getting machines and systems to make really smart decisions, right? So that when we say smart decisions, we mean decisions autonomously or partially autonomously, and we want to make those decisions really robust and stable. So uh, we can rely on those machines to do the job they've been asked to do. And we think about robots in the air, land and sea. For us, we think about decision-making control using the sense side act loop and paradigm in which a robot senses where it is in the world, makes a decision to act, it acts, and then it re-senses where it is and continues around that loop multiple times. This allows a robot, for example, to move through a position trajectory through space. One of the challenges is how to do this reliably for, pro for robots that might have to operate in the presence of disturbances and error, things like wind gusts and things like that. Been working a lot in how to design safe control systems when communications are uncertain, how to design safe control systems when humans are involved in the decision making. And another aspect we've been looking into as well is how to design control algorithms that ensure safety and performance guarantees despite possible cyber attacks on the communication or control algorithms. So if we can coordinate vehicles together, we can improve our traffic efficiency, so moving vehicles through a city, say, reduce traffic jams, also reduce environmental emissions and also energy usage. If you have multiple cars travelling together and one starts braking, the other has to brake a little bit more so it doesn't hit the car in front. And we see that happening in traffic all the time. You have those ghost traffic jams because of that. If you, if you are the last one in the convoy, for example, you're experiencing large accelerations and then large breakings and, and that oscillation. So I'm mostly concerned of reducing that. It's bigger. Now with the, our proposed controller, <clears throat> um, the, the controller behaves differently and it reduces this overshoot. So now it's independent on the number of vehicles you add on that, um, on that convoy that you never have this amplification. We're working with a team in Germany. Um, this is research funded by the German Research Foundation who are looking at how to estimate a communication channel's properties online. So obtain that information. And what we want to do is use that information and build it into our controller such that we're able to use that about whether we need to increase our safety margins because we're losing channel quality or we can even move closer because we have quite reliable communication and we're able to receive something, a piece of information from a leading vehicle uh, quite quickly and then react to that appropriately. So most of my work is around something called UTM or unmanned traffic management. So what this is, is you can think of it as a air traffic management system for drones. So we don't have that right now, but in the future, if we want to have lots of drones flying around our skies, etc., we're going to need a way to manage them. And what's likely to happen is that those systems will be autonomous and they're going to do all this management um, sort of pretty much by itself with a bit of oversight from a human operator. Another area we're interested in is developing uh, systems that have ability to self-diagnose um, when something's changed in the environment, something's changed about themselves, for example, they're experiencing fault, and then they can switch behaviours to keep themselves safe or safe from others. So our work is detecting mid-air aircraft collisions, so an aircraft coming head to head with another aircraft. So you've got an onboard vision sensor on one aircraft and you're visually trying to detect incoming collision threats. And that can be really challenging because when an aircraft is coming head on, often it doesn't have a lot of relative motion uh, compared to the background. So it can be just a tiny little speck that you see in an image. We were looking at controlling a vessel um, traveling in the ocean. So it's being impacted by environmental disturbances such as waves and, and current impacting on the vessel. And there's a particular phenomena when a vessel's traveling directly into waves, and the wave height is at a certain property to the ship and the, the wave frequency, so the distance between waves it is, is at the same length of the vessel. It can experience a phenomenon known as parametric roll resonance. 
And this is where the roll motion builds from basically nothing, so the vessel's effectively flat, to it's rolling so far that it's, it might be a danger of capsizing, or in a case of a cargo vessel, actually losing containers overboard. So we developed a detection system that looks at the frequency properties of the pitch motion and the heave motion. So the pitch motion is the forward uh, rolling and the heave is the vertical motion of the vessel. And looking at the statistical properties of that motion, we're able to detect the onset of parametric roll resonance in a large vessel from some sample data that we have. And then ideally, this could be communicated to a, a ship operator to maneuver the vessel out of that environment. We've had a rich history in working on building robotic systems to enable infrastructure inspection. For example, how you might automate or semi-automate general, general aviation aircraft to fly over the power distribution network in the state of Queensland and uh, facilitate the detection of vegetation encroachment. One of the challenges in developing a system like that is you're working with a very large system, uh, a Cessna aircraft if you like, and how you build reliable control systems to fly. One other area that we're working on is instead of just using one single UAV, it's on using multiple UAVs. And because they enable more capability and faster response, uh, being able to deploy multiple UAVs for search and rescue, for example, indoor, or outdoors, it allows a faster response um, in those cases. Having multiple drones performing a search and rescue task and having all the drones sharing information among each other and then coordinating the fly pattern and the search so, the, so we maximize the area that we cover for an application such as uh, search and rescue. With these tiny little drones, um, we will deploy them simultaneously and they will do like a circular pattern. Uh, they are flying at different altitudes, so it could be fun because at some point they could intercept each other and they try to keep a distance to the floor. So when one go over the other one, you will try to like a jump to keep the, the distance, or well, the one in the middle will stay in there. Our system is to navigate in complex environments, environments where Feedback from sensors such as GPS are limit or uh, with, with absence of GPS signal. So we have incorporated a UAS solution so that the UAV is able to navigate autonomously with an onboard computer. It takes uh, observations from the environment and the UAV has incorporated artificial intelligence to take a sequence of actions for uh, and accomplish the task. In this case, the task is to find lost people. I do have a, I do have a hope that we might be able to build more resilient systems, um, more resilient control systems. And by that, I mean systems that have an ability to detect that something significantly has changed and they should change their behavior. Be that stop moving or be that go to a safe mode of operation. I see that as a pathway, the next step perhaps, in developing um, systems operating in the real world with an increased level of reliability so that we can, we can trust, trust them more.